Hello, it's my three talking points. Everton nil, Brighton and Hove Albion three. The Blues suffer another opening day defeat at Goodison without scoring a goal. Uh, becoming a bit of a reoccurring theme, a frustrating theme, really. Uh, today, like I said on my match reaction, I thought, uh, I thought Everton started okay, but once we go a goal down, it, it's that you can't see a way that we're going to get back into the game and we then capitulate. And we've ended up, you know, losing three 0 It could have been four. They the goal disallowed, and we've got it. We, you know, we've we've got to come up with better. And I think the players, a few of the players, are gonna to have to look at themselves in the mirror after that today. It was a poor performance, and we can't have performances like that. We really can't. And we've been punished, and that's football, isn't it? That is football, and it it's frustrating because I want to be looking at it, building a team the way Brighton have done, really well, fresh, hungry, quick. Desperate to win games of football. I don't love what we do, I'll be honest. Um, I know a lot of people do love it. And a lot of people love the manager and his style of football. It's not really what I like. I'd like us to be a bit more attacking. Um, but I understand where we where we are right now. And But we do have to be better and we can be better, even with the limited resources we've got. And, we've, we've, you know, they're going to have to come up with better than what we saw today. First thing I want to talk about is sort of the tactical side of it today. I just thought, I thought Everton, want, it just seemed like we had one tactic, smash it over their left-back for Jack Harrison. And it's okay if that you've identified, and clearly Everton had identified some space in behind them, but there has to be a different way of playing as well. I think the core was totally and utterly... Um, can I say he just wasn't in the game? He just was not in the game today. He just the game bypassed him. It really did. He wasn't a threat. He didn't press quickly. He offered very little, and I'm amazed he lasted as long as he did before the manager took him off. Um, should have gone off a half time for me. Thought he was he had one of his poorer games for Everton today. We just couldn't get into the game, and I do feel like this with with Adelaide Corey at times. I think he's. I think he's better away from home. I think at Goodison, he, the game does bypass him a lot. And I think when your tactic is to get it wide the way we did, he has to become more involved. He's got to get himself into the box more or go and support the winger. I think what the tactic that we did, was, which was, again, driving it into that space, the cross then has to come in. I think it doesn't really work when your, your winger's left-footed and has to check back on his, on you know onto that left foot a lot. He takes the, the sort of momentum out the move. There was a couple of times where Jack Harrison got it down and come inside. I don't mind that. And he hit a good, you know, a good shot, which Steele made a good save from. But when you're when you're using that, that has to be get it down, go, get to the byline and cut it back. And people have got to be in the box. And we just didn't do it. We didn't do it. And you saw with Brighton a lot more decisive than us. Um even with, with the first goal, Mint has just got out of his feet and put it in a dangerous area and Matoma's tapped it in at the far post and they threw a couple like that across, which fizzed right the way across. Uh, and it, and that's that's the way it is for us. We're, I just thought seven weeks pre-season, we could have come up with a little bit more than one tactic. And yeah, I, again, it, it, you know, it doesn't work. You're in trouble, aren't you? And we went behind and then we're always in trouble. Because that's the way it's been, you know, over two years since we beat a team who scored a goal at Goodison. That's got to change soon, because if we do go behind, generally that means there's no victory and we've struggled big time today. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is the bright spot, really, which is Tim Iribunum. I thought he was Premier League debut for us. Um, I thought he was excellent. I thought he was excellent. He did tire and he did start getting sloppy as the game went on. You could say inevitably if you want, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, we, you know, I thought there was a lot of good signs. They travel as well with the ball, nicked it back up for us many times. I think if we were a bit more incisive, he'd develop a bit more and be, uh, I think we'd get more out of him. He'd put a couple of great balls through into wide areas. And again, that's where you're looking for that pace to get in behind. Everton's problem, we all know it. Everybody knows it, bar the recruitment team and the manager, it seems that we are lacking in pace. You know, Everton, social video, no social clip last week where they're trying to pick 
a four by one hundred meter uh, team, and every one of them is scratching their head who's quick. You know that shouldn't be the case. You should be looking around, going, "Don't know who to leave out." He's fast. He's fast. He's fast. He went. They were like looking around the gym, going, "Who's quick in that?" And that's terrible. But when your when your tactic is to get in behind teams, those players getting in behind have to be quick. Ira Boonham done a great bit of play, nicked it, went beyond some you know couple of their players and threaded the lovely little ball below me. It was in behind for that like the call right to run onto and he just jogged onto it and stopped, slowed it down, come back. Well that chance has gone. Whereas players who were quick would have been onto that and driving into the penalty area, which would have committed them. And I think as we go forward. We definitely we have got to in this next thirteen days now, isn't it? Till the window shuts, Everton have got to be creative. Everton have gone after come up with a player who is quick, who they can get in because we just don't have it anywhere in that team. Someone who can drive in behind defensive. If that's what we're gonna do, because otherwise we're playing, we're just playing long balls and pick up the fifty fifty, the second balls, aren't we? Which went out about in about nineteen ninety five. That went out. 1996, that kind of football. And that, we don't have good enough players to go and win the second balls either. So, it, we've got to be a little bit cleverer than what we've what we've shown today. But it a boon them. Loads and positives for me today. Good physicality about him. Travels well with the ball, like I said. One lot back, good tackles on him. Just as he, you could tell, he was getting a bit tired as the game went on. Sloppiness came into it and he sort of dropped down to everybody else's level. We were up against 10 men. By the way, it, sorry, we were down to 10 men at that time as well. So obviously it became more difficult. And it's difficult 10 by 11 against a team who keeps the ball well and moves it well. It's always going to be such a tough ask. So he was the bright spot for me. And third and final thing really is, is Dominic Calvert-Loon. Talked about it all summer. Don't think it's helping anybody. Uh, I, I think Everton have to get... Everton have to get this sorted in the next few days. For me, they won't because I don't think they operate like that, but they need to. I think the uncertainty has to go because there's a, even if it's not the case, people are looking at Dominic Calvert-Lewin like he's not interested now and like he could have done more and he doesn't want to put himself about in case he gets an injury and he get, doesn't get his move or whatever. I think that's not helpful to anybody. And I'm not saying Dom's done that today. I don't think he played very well. I don't think he had it. It just, you, listen, a lot of them, quite a lot of them can walk off that pitch and, and say, that wasn't my day today. I didn't have a good game. Uh, he was just one of the many. He went off the pitch, got taken off as well, didn't he, for Beto? Um, but I think we need some clarity in that because I, I do think Everton, Everton needs something different up there. They need something different. If Dom's staying and he signs a contract, you know, we know there's a lot of interest in Beto. Will he freshen it up that way? If Dom is staying and they don't want to sell Beto, they're going to have to create some money from somewhere else. It is, I, I get it's difficult. Then that money has to be on a wide player. There's got to be an attacking option and a fresh attacking option added in the next 13 days. Am I confident that'll happen? No. I think they'll probably end up bringing a defender in on loan or maybe a midfield player. We need another attacking option. We need one with pace. I've just been speaking about it before with Ira Boonham playing those balls in behind. You've got to have someone who's capable of getting in behind. You can't be one-paced. Everton are too one-paced. The two wide plays he chose today, Dwight McNeil always runs back towards his own goal. He doesn't get his head down and drive towards a goal. And he didn't today. Everything was backwards and safe. Jack Harrison... Works his socks off and wants to get in, but because he's playing on the right hand side with the left foot, everything he has to check back every single time onto that left foot. He tried the odd one with his right foot, one went straight to the goalie, the other one got blocked. But even he has he hasn't got that pace to really trouble him behind. Illiman and Dai came on him and seemed to play in a few positions, but we down to ten men, so you can't get any real um feeling of what his role was supposed to be. I think he'd gone and sort of was going to be playing off Beto, but it didn't really happen. Like I said before, Jesper Lindstrom didn't even get on the pitch. Um, and the squad will be straight. I mean, Ashley Young now, stupid decision. He's out the game next week now at Spurs. What will a manager do? He put Mason Holgate on. I didn't love the booze that for Mason Holgate when he came on. Uh, I didn't love that, I'll be honest. 
But we are going back to a player who was told a year ago that he had no future at the football club and now the manager's bringing him on. It was a bit weird. I had to put Jake O'Brien on and gone to three at the back. We were we were getting done anyway. Uh, so I don't know what he'll do at Spurs next week. Will he go with Jack Harrison at right back? Will he go with Mason Holgate at right back? I doubt. I'd be amazed if it was Roman Dixon. Although really, he's an available right back. I don't think Patterson will be ready. So play Dixon. He won't. But that's that's what I would do. Um, and that's where the problems are within the squad. But I think in an attacking sense, we need clarity from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. What's happening? We need to bring in another forward player, a quick forward player, uh, so we're not moving four or five people. Around. And the manager, really, he's going to have to trust people. He's going to have to change very slightly what he wants to do. Players forget about Premier League experience. Players have to play the professional footballers, playing a game of footy. You've gone with Premier League experience today. It ain't worked. One of them with more Premier League experience than anyone else has tried to control a ball up against someone who's quick and then just decided to drag him back and get sent off. So that's a load of nonsense. So maybe just have a rethink on that. But that's me today. I'm done. Goodison is back. Everton are back. And the Premier League season, oh my God, it's a nightmare start. But what can you say? Things can only get better. Everton nil, Brighton 3 wasn't great. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. See you later.